about really about four or five blocks from where the explosion took place, right behind a right behind a refinery called Monsanto at the time. Texas City was a petrochemical place just starting up a sugar refinery, and a lot of people were coming in here for work. Because when you came up from rural area from World War II, uh, came from the farm in some local area where you made about 75 cents an hour to a town where you were making about $3 per hour, that was a lot of opportunities. The city began to grow tremendously. At that time, we only had about 16,000 people. And the fluctuation of people in the Texas city from Kanji and towns, from Wallabillum Patch Town, from uh, Sugarcane Patch Town, from prison, from army, were fluctuating the Texas city because of Blue Breakfast Show is sponsored by Southeast Health. Live, local, now. This is The Breakfast Show. Good morning and welcome on this Wednesday as we're looking live outside this morning. It has been a very active morning. In fact, we've already had some tornado warnings and we're starting to get some new information in on Bollinger County and Brian, I'm just hearing from the sheriff that they are dealing with some issues, structure damage, road blockages in the Glen Allen and Grassy area in Bollinger County. We understand that there is some damage and you were on the air just talking about that moments ago. So get us caught up. Is the threat over at least for now? Well, the tornado threat seems to be over. What we have right now is a huge area under severe thunderstorm warnings. The whole complex is hot, kind of uh, devolved, if you will from a individual supercell uh, system to just a large area of severe th thunderstorms with damaging winds. But uh, yeah, earlier for about two hours, we tracked a couple of supercells, including the one that you mentioned causing damage in Bollinger County, all the way across Southeast Missouri. And judging from the radar, I, I suspect that the tornado may have been on the ground that entire time, at least, uh, it looked really impressive on radar, including velocity data all the way across, say, Ripley County, Carter County especially, very significant uh, radar returns up into Wayne and Bollinger counties as well. Now, the whole thing has kind of devolved, as I said, and I think we, at least for now, we have seen the threat change from a, a tornado threat to a strong wind threat. And just real quickly, you can see uh, severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for much of southwest Illinois, what, uh, Way uh, Williamson County, uh, Jackson County, Car uh, Carbondale getting hit right now with a lot of lightning and high winds, I'm sure heavy rain, Union County, Cape County, Bollinger County, all the way down towards, well, we do have a new uh, severe thunderstorm warning now, actually. No, I guess that's just the southern end of the whole thing, but Stoddard County under a severe thunderstorm warning as well. And, of course, we have a tornado watch in effect as two, which I'll show you. But just look at all the lightning, Crystal. There was a tremendous amount of cloud to ground lightning. We're also getting, uh, obviously, very strong winds up to 60 miles an hour. So right now, just this line of storms moving to the east. And uh, I think we've got a little track here showing just a bunch of uh, towns like Marion, Cape Girardeau, all the way down towards Sykeston, East Prairie, Harrisburg eventually, too. So if you live in southern Illinois, southeast Missouri, you're under the gun as this complex moves to the east and causes at least... 60 mile an hour winds, lots of damage possible this morning. And of course, the news department's still efforting to go into Bollinger County and perhaps back to the southwest and see how much damage was done by that confirmed tornado. All right, Brian. Well, with that in mind, we do have some outages to report. Nearly 1,400 Black River customers out of power right now in Bollinger County. We understand about 700 or so outages in Wayne County. And obviously, these numbers could fluctuate throughout the morning. But why don't we go ahead and take a live shot? We have our crew, as Brian just mentioned, heading toward Bollinger County. Of course, it's still dark right now, but uh, this is Nolan Cook, who is driving in the storm tracker. And you can see that lightning just uh, flashing uh, to light up the road there, uh, which is the one good thing um, is that we're able to finally start to see a little bit uh, of what's going on. Those people who have power outages, they can at least uh, have some natural light, some lighting. But this is on Highway 34. He just got out of the Jackson area and is heading toward Bollinger County to see exactly what we're dealing with. And let me just get you caught up on what I have learned. Uh, still very little at this hour out of Bollinger County, but that is where our concern is. I just spoke to a lady in dispatch for Bollinger County who, when I asked her, she could describe to me what's going on. All she could say was we're in a state of chaos right now. And so I did just hear from 
Sheriff Casey Graham, who told me that first responders and law enforcement are responding to reports of structure damage and road blockages in the Glen Allen and Grassy area. He says that we're asking if you are not first responders to please avoid the area. He's going to continue to try to update us as much as he can because he understands that this is a public safety issue and we want to make sure that people know what they can expect as they head out and about this morning. So this is a story that we're, we're very concerned about um, as the daylight hours approach um, to see what actually has been damaged in Bollinger County. But once again, this is a live shot as our crew is headed that direction to see what type of damage exactly has happened in Bollinger County. So we will continue to update that. And as a reminder, that KFES 12 weather app on your phone, it can let you know exactly when those alerts are happening. In fact, mine went off this morning. As soon as I woke up, I saw the, the threat that was in Bollinger County. And that way that if you lose power, um, if your phone's charged, you can still get those alerts so that you know exactly what's going on with the weather situation. So we're going to stay on top of that. If we get more warnings, of course, we will be on the air, but we're going to move on to some other news this morning. Election results. And this morning, the city of Carbondale has a new official mayor. Last night, Carol Visser conceded to Carolyn Harvey, the mayor pro tem. Harvey won with 82% of the vote. She addressed attendees of her crowd, thanked them and, and offered her gratitude to all of those supporters and voters. Harvey has been the, acting as the mayor pro tem since Mike Henry took a leave of absence back in August. Her platform includes curbing crime in the city and increasing the availability of housing for low and middle income families. I want to say thank you and I would like to say hopefully we all can work together whether you voted for me or not. We're all file a motion to dismiss the charges. Christian Benavides, CBS News, West Palm Beach, Florida. So the next hearing in this case is scheduled for December 4th. The former president will be expected to appear. Hey, a developing story this morning. A tornado damage confirmed this morning over southeast Missouri, especially in Bullinger County and perhaps to the southwest of there as well. That storm is gradually weakening, but developing into a wind threat We've got a whole bunch of severe thunderstorm warnings in effect right now for southwest Missouri, southeast, or southwest Illinois, southeast Missouri for strong, damaging winds, frequent lightning, heavy rain. We'll check the radar more closely after the break. Thinking about selling your car, truck, or SUV? Then go to Chris Wants Cars. First Alert Weather with Brian Allward is sponsored by St. Francis Healthcare System. If you are just joining us, this has been a stormy night, especially the last two or three hours since about 1 a.m. We have been tracking tornadoes across southeast Missouri, at least one confirmed causing damage in Bollinger County, and we've got reporters on the way. So this is a developing story. Now, thankfully, that whole system is kind of broken down or devolved in just, into just a large, severe thunderstorm complex across southern Illinois and southeast Missouri. A bunch of warnings in effect, but they're just severe thunderstorm warnings at this point, mostly for wind, and you can see the heavy uh, precip, this is west of 57 in Franklin County, Perry County, Carbondale getting heavy rain, although Carbondale not officially in a warning, but here's the warning, mostly for wind across Union County, Cape Girardeau County, uh, Westcott County, Stoddard County, Advance, you're getting hit right now, uh, Bollinger County, southeast Bollinger County, uh, still with a very heavy rain as well. And no warning for this line actually extends down toward uh, Ripley County. Boy, Ripley County got hit hard overnight. As I said earlier, that tornado was not detected until it was in Bollinger County, but it may have been on the ground all across Wayne County, Ripley County, and Carter County, too, because, uh, boy, it looks tough on radar there for a while, reflectivity and on the velocity. Anyway, it's a warm, humid, windy morning. Current temps are mostly in the 70s, gusty south winds. We've got wind advisories in effect. That cold front is still west of here, and that's why we think we could still have more severe thunderstorms during the day. 74 degrees of thunderstorm currently, and uh, let's do a larger view. And you can see what happened about 1, 2 o'clock in this morning. These supercells came in and uh, possibly, or we know now confirmed, put down at least one tornado, now kind of breaking down into just a big storm complex. But here's where the front is, and there's another line of strong storms along that. Now, thankfully for us, with that line coming through, more, less likely to be tornadoes, 
more likely it'd just be a squall line with wind. As you can see in the pink, the severe thunderstorm watch with the line, we're still under a tornado watch until 9 a.m. Latest in the Storm Prediction Center, level two, level three. This is for today. This is not, this is like from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m., right? So more thunderstorms likely during the day today. Otherwise, windy and mild, not as warm as yesterday. Highs in the 70s, but more strong storms are possible until about five or six. We'll do a future cast coming up. Rain pushes out of here this evening, and it'll start to cool down overnight. We may still have some post-sunset showers in western Kentucky, northwest Tennessee, but by tomorrow morning, it should be drier and cooler with temps in the 40s. Take care. All right, Brian. Well, we are going back out live now this morning. This is our photographer, Nolan Cook, who is safely driving while the storm tracker is recording video at this hour. He's heading toward Marble Hill or the Glen Allen area uh, to see exactly what type of damage has been done in Bollinger County as we were on the air for a couple of hours earlier. Uh, Brian talking about the, the tornado warning in that area. And according to the National Weather Service, the storm hit near Glen Allen around 341 this morning. So not very long ago. In fact, we're hearing multiple homes have damage in the Glen Allen area. We don't know about injuries just yet. And of course, there's a lot of um, information being put out on social media right now. We're trying to make sure that we get that information correct and get it out to you as to exactly what's going on. Um, but we do know that they are responding to reports of structure damage and road blockages in the Glen Allen and Grassy area. I'm in contact with the sheriff, and as soon as he gives me any more official word as to what's going on in that area, and as soon as our photographer gets there to show us some some sights and sounds, we of course will bring that to you. Meanwhile, if you're searching for a job in Southern Illinois, the Franklin County Job Fair returns to West Frankfort later this month. It will be held at the West Frankfort Aquatic Center on April 26th. This is from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Attendees are asked to dress professionally as they talk with potential employers, fill out job applications, and submit resumes. Organizers say employers, large and small, from several Southern Illinois counties, they will be looking for potential applicants to fill job openings. First alert, Doppler is still showing strong thunderstorms across southwest uh, Illinois and southeast Missouri. Now, the uh, most of southeast Missouri and southern Illinois is still under officially a tornado watch, but the warnings right now are for severe winds. In fact, we just got a report officially of a gust of just over 60 miles an hour in the Carbondale area, probably with this line moving through. So, uh, make sure this is an unofficial warning or heads up for you if you live uh, in southern Illinois, Franklin County, Williamson County. Uh, winds of 50 or 60 miles an hour moving east into your area. We do have official warnings for uh, Jackson County, Union County, Capes County, and uh, you can kind of see the outlines here down towards Stoddard County, uh, down 55. Looks like uh, this is moving toward the interstate now or moving across the interstate into Alexander County as well. The whole system is kind of broken down into more of a uh, big mass of wind producing thunderstorms, but of course you can have widespread damage with that too. So Severe thunderstorm warnings in effect, a tornado watch in effect. So this may be an active day with periods of thunderstorms. At noon, the, uh, for this particular model has done pretty well so far. You can kind of tell where the front is, and it looks like we may start to redevelop another line by noon. And uh, look at this, 2 o'clock, very strong storms in southern Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee. And this is 2 o'clock this afternoon, right? So this is a long, we've still got a long way to go. That front is still well to our northwest. So we may get breaks here, but eventually more thunderstorms are likely today and we're outlook for more severe weather. With these additional storms, most likely to be wind damage rather than the supercell tornado damage that we've seen over the last couple of hours. Even late tonight, a few showers or storms could linger in our far southeastern counties, but for the most part, the severe weather threat should be gone because there'll be a north wind behind the front. So bottom line, Crystal, this is a developing story. We obviously had at least one tornado on the ground across southeast Missouri early this morning. We're investigating the, the latest on that. Right now, it's right now anyway, it's mostly a severe thunderstorm wind damage scenario, but more storms are likely later on today. All right. And
of course, we will keep a close eye on all of that and get you updated as soon as we learn more. Well, it also happens to be National Walking Day. Since 2007, the American Heart Association has taken the time to remind people about the health benefits of walking every day. Walking every April is what they're trying to focus on here. It doesn't have to be a long walk. Just carve out some 30 minutes at some point during your day. Those with the AHA encourage you to walk with a friend or maybe your pet. Be sure that you stretch, drink lots of water, and move your arms while you walk. Get 11% off. Good Breakfast Show is sponsored by Southeast Health. 